So I just finished these NeuroDoodle designs with my Art 1 classes and my Advanced Art class. And I just wanted to share what I learned along the way and some tips and things that made it a little bit easier and kind of how I presented the lesson to make it easy to understand so that my students learned some design skills and strategies um, and how I modified it for the advanced students versus the beginners. So to begin this project, students begin by drawing a random line across their page, a looping line for about three to four seconds. One thing I learned along the course is to really push them to make big shapes. A lot of them wanted to make these tiny, tight little shapes. I also made the mistake of giving them the fine point Sharpie in the beginning, and the beginners had a really hard time smoothing out their lines with this tiny little Sharpie. So uh, it, with the beginners, definitely the thicker marker works best in the beginning. So once they drew their initial line, uh, I showed them how to, at wherever one line intersects another, we took those pointy V shapes and rounded them out into U shapes. I showed them some examples of neurographic art, but explained that this design is really inspired by neurographic art. This isn't true neurographic art. Uh, real neurographic art, you, you really need to be trained in that discipline and have uh, experience with art therapy. So I gave them a little bit of the history of how or uh, the ideas of how they could incorporate mindfulness into this. Um, but we did not do like true neurographic art. We just took elements from neurographic art and then created our own designs out of it. So here, once they started with the Sharpie, I really had to encourage them to not be afraid to thicken up some of their lines or make some of their lines go from thick to thin uh, and really push them to do that. And I also encouraged them to go slowly and as they flowed throughout the design, like move from one shape to the next and really take their time rather than bounce around it was just easier for them, I noticed throughout the course, to not get overwhelmed by a bunch of like unfinished parts or unfinished intersections. They could get that sense of accomplishment and finishing a task or finishing an area and really see the design kind of come together a little bit more. Once they finished their design and or they finished that initial line, then I had them either trace some shapes over the top and I had them go slowly, just one or two at a time and then smooth them out. Uh, I found if I let them uh, trace too many, their designs would become uh, very complex and they would get a little bit overwhelmed by how much they had to do. So I just stressed that they could always add more to their design. Uh, and we also talked a little bit about balance and focal point here. So for one day, we practiced on the six by nine paper. And then once they completed that, we moved on to good watercolor paper. I tried to do it on brown craft paper. Um, I thought it was a little bit harder for them to experiment with the color. So going forward, I probably would not give the option of the brown craft paper again and work strictly on the watercolor paper. So I gave them the option of taping out a border. If they taped out the border, I told them to make sure that they took the tape first and stuck it all over like their clothes first to get it less sticky. Uh, and some of them still stuck, so you, you really have to get lots of lint on the tape so it's just barely sticky, otherwise it can rip your paper. So the simplest thing that I realized I needed to explain that I kind of took for granted students would just know is to line up the tape with the edge of the paper. As I was walking around in my first period, I saw some kids like trying to put the tape like in the middle of their page or measure it out with a ruler and they were making crooked lines. So just one of those things that may seem obvious, they're not really thinking of. So I made sure in the rest of my classes, I showed them that easy little common sense. So the next thing we did is we continued and completed our design on the good paper the same way we did it on the small paper. So whenever I introduce something, I always introduce it with a video demo, um, only because, well, for a lot of reasons, but 
One being, I feel like I could show the project unfold from start to finish in so much less time by speeding up certain parts, highlighting certain certain things, and students get a sense of the whole project. Um, and also, it's great for when students are absent. Uh, I, don't, I don't have to waste time re-demonstrating everything over and over again. I can actually spend time working on uh, like actual like design issues or go deeper with the students that already know the next steps. So I don't have to keep repeating the same steps over and over again. Um, so with this project, I ended up, originally I had one long video, but then I realized it was kind of too much all at once. So I broke it down into two steps. So the first video was how to do the line portion of the project and focused on line. And then the second portion was more about design and color. So I made these handouts where students could scan the QR codes. Like if they were absent or they came in late, they had a lot of guidance appointments. Um, and then they could see my video demonstrations and slideshows uh, with examples and stuff uh, right from their phones. And I also posted it to Google Classroom um, so that they could do the same thing. So these are just some examples from my various levels. Um, I kind of took the design in a little bit of a different direction for Fine Art 1, and I gave my advanced students a little bit more freedom. But in a nutshell, um, with the ones, we really focused on using analogous colors and layering. And then with my advanced, I let them kind of dive deeper and follow their intuition and, and be a little bit more um, exploratory. So I hope this helps and enjoy the lesson.